The Ministry of Defence has today unveiled its new centre to help soldiers deal with mental stress. It's cost millions of pounds. It's a four-bed unit in Peterborough and it's designed to help servicemen when they come back from war. In the past, the MOD has been criticised for the way it deals with soldiers when they come back from Afghanistan and Iraq. After this, life can never be the same again. There are a number of people being um, blown up and um, seeing up some very unusual sights that you just wouldn't see in day-to-day -day life as, as a civilian. And so people come back um, from operational tours with these memories and sometimes it's a little hard uh, to adjust to them. Now they've opened up an inpatient centre to deal with mental illness for the 28,000 troops across the region. But with only four beds, is it enough? The throughput is actually very, is quite quick. They are assessed and treated, and actually if the assessment is that they can be treated in the community, then they go back to that extensive support in the, tre in, in the community. So they don't have to stay here for the treatment. Military medics say they're working hard to help those under stress. The biggest fight is stigma. Emma Bohr, BBC Le Keast. Former workers from the Vistian factory in Basildon protested today over the threat to their pension fund. 170 workers lost their jobs when the car park company failed. Former workers say they're facing massive cuts in their pensions. They want Ford, which formerly owned Vistian, to step in. I've worked for Ford all my life, 34 years. I talk about the family of Ford, about, you know, being a family, a community. It was rubbish, wasn't it? They, they you know, Ford are responsible completely. They can put their hand in their pocket and pay up now. A man has appeared in court today following the stabbing of a TV presenter at a village shop in Norfolk. Matt Pritchard, who makes programmes for MTV, was stabbed at the co-op store in Toftwood on Monday. He was treated in hospital. Mark Smith from Toftwood has been charged with wounding with intent. It's an important night for two former football managers from this region. George Burley and Nigel Worthington were both very successful at Ipswich and Norwich. Now they're both managers of national teams with crucial games tonight in the World Cup. Two managers, two countries vying for the ultimate prize. One a former blue, one formerly a canary. A win for George Burley, Scotland tonight will keep their World Cup playoff hopes alive. I think with anything, you're trying to do your best um, at your job. You're trying to work hard. Uh, and get the right results. And you have your ups and downs, but the most important thing is you're, you're positive. Burley made his name at Portman Road. During an eight year reign, he guided Ipswich to three playoffs and finally back to the Premier League, then into Europe. But he's under mounting pressure in Scotland. Fans at this men's working club in Corby might not be queuing up to buy him a pint should they fail to beat Holland. All down to the manager. And if he can't pick the right team, is out the door. I really don't think what he, he's got what it takes, but it's only as good as the players. These scenes stick out in the memory of Norwich fans, as does this man. And we've done it! Flags waved in salute of Nigel Worthington after the club's championship title five years ago. Soon after, they were waving goodbye. Not all were convinced about his credentials to manage at international level, but Northern Ireland look well set to qualify as they take on Slovakia. There's an opportunity to come join in life, uh, and sometimes you've just got to grasp it, and I think this is one of these opportunities. His record shows over his, uh, his managerial career that, he's, that he has had success. You know, he, he took over a Norwich side that was you know, really struggling. You know, I was part of that side, you know, potentially going down out of the championship, kept us up, and then playoff final and a promotion. So no, not a surprise at all. Two managers hoping for further success on the world stage. Tom Williams, BBC Look East. Administrators have agreed to sell Great Lee's race course in Essex. The course has shut since January when it was put into administration. A consortium of local businessmen have agreed to purchase the track for an undisclosed sum. They hope to see the return of horse racing in 2011. I think it's fair to say for most of us, one crayfish is much like any other. Of course, it's not true. For example, the white-clawed crayfish is a native of this country and the bigger signal crayfish is American. The problem is they don't get on. This is an endangered species. The white-clawed crayfish used to be abundant in our waterways. Now, in Suffolk, there are very few places where they can be found. Since about the 1970s, they've just been disappearing from one river system after another. 
um, and eventually we think they'll just completely disappear. It's a bit like red squirrels and grey squirrels because we've got an invasive alien species coming in. The problem is the signal crayfish, originally from North America. Twice the size of our native crayfish, they're more aggressive. They eat them. And they carry a disease, crayfish plague, which is fatal to any white-clawed crayfish which escape their pincers. That's why these native crayfish have been brought from the River Wensum in Norfolk to a lake in a secret location, a lake free of signal crayfish. There they go. We're moving them to a receptor site, which is an isolated lake, where hopefully they will do very well, because there won't be the threats that they've suffered um, in the rivers. They call it an ark, a place where the crayfish will become established, ready for eventual release back into our waterways. But their long-term future depends on finding a way to control their deadly enemy, the signal crayfish. John Halford, BBC Look East, Suffolk. Now, some people love to dig, some people talk to their plants, and some love to mow. Whatever you enjoy, a few hours in the garden can work wonders. Well, now a hospital in Suffolk is going a step further, a lifetime garden, to bring back memories for people with Alzheimer's. Come on, Janie. Come on, sweetheart. Jean has been Ernie's sweetheart for more than half a century, but for too long he's had to watch her succumb to the onset of Alzheimer's. Can you hear water, Jeannie? Can you hear the water? Hey. Now Jean lives here at Carlton Court Mental Health Hospital near Lowestoft. Better have one of them to go in here. Yeah. Where staff, patients and carers are creating a garden designed to bring back memories of happier times. Hey. How's your feet, Jean? When she's been out here and she goes back with a bit of colour in her cheeks and she settles down, she's calmer, we both find a bit of peace here. There's a meadow occupied by plastic sheep, which has already triggered memories for a resident who used to farm. And there's also a seaside garden. Another gentleman, he saw the boat on the seaside garden and started chatting about the time when he was in the Navy. So, and, and that was a lovely moment. And he actually got on his hands and knees and helped us to put all the sand on the, on the, on the seaside bit. The hospital now wants to add a Mediterranean garden to trigger memories of happy holidays. But in a small way, this garden is already making a difference. Yeah, right. What are you looking at? Because you're on this guilt trip, that's your best friend set here, and you, should be, you think you should be doing more, which you can't, then it, it helped me to know that she's been relaxed and she's... She's still part of me. Where if she's in um, her area where she lives, then of course there's other people there. But here it's it's, it's private. He's tired, Jeannie. I feel it's been a private meeting. Joel Matt, BBC Lacoste in Carlton Colville.